So hey there everybody and welcome back to the channel. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich and today's topic is going to be a continuation of our first part of a new Lightroom catalog for a new year. So this is part two on YouTube and if you haven't seen part one yet, there's going to be a link down below and also a link in the info card in the upper right hand corner. So go, go check out that video first where we uh, set up a new Lightroom catalog and go through the explanations of what I'm doing for setting up the catalog. At the end of part one, we actually did import some images and we're looking at those images now. Now the, these images aren't from 2022, we still got a couple more days in 2021, but I wanted to start putting this series together for folks. And there is going to be a longer full length tutorial series over on teachable.com and when it's ready, I'll be announcing that. It's gonna include some of this YouTube content and then a whole lot of new content going through all the facets of Lightroom. So, in part two, what I wanted to do here with you today is actually take you through the overall interface. So as I said on the last video, we imported some images to work with just uh, to give us an idea and a feel for Lightroom. But let's take a look at this whole overall interface because there is a lot going on. There's a lot to unpack here. Um, number one, we've got our menus up top, which we will be talking about in a later part of the series. We've got a toolbar on the left hand side. We've got another toolbar on the right hand side. We've got a film strip down at the bottom. And uh, so there's a lot of buttons and tools to deal with. Um, on top of those, we also, in the upper right-hand corner, have our library, develop, map, book, slideshow, print, and web. So you might be asking yourself, hey, why is Rich spending so much time on Lightroom here? Well, we know that this is mostly a drone channel here on YouTube, and we talk about drone imaging, drone video, construction progression, um, doing time-lapse material for clients. And, you know, one part of drone operation uh, is taking still images and I still haven't found a better solution than Lightroom for my purposes at least for managing still images so that's why I continue to use Lightroom for over a decade now and I've tried out basically all of the other management applications out there and once again when it comes to still images I like what I can do in Lightroom so that's my explanation of my own uh, personal interests in Lightroom now as I said, we have a lot of tools here and these tools can be very useful for our drone work or our standard photography work as well. One interesting thing to note before we get into the interface, up in that upper right hand bar there, we've got the library, we've got the develop module, we've got the map. I'm gonna click on the map really quick because the images that we imported in part one were actually images taken with a drone and the drone does have GPS information. So each of the images that we photograph, each of the images that we shoot, I should say, um, has GPS information in it. So if you're keeping track of job sites for clients uh, and bringing in new images, you can pull those images up in the map, uh, in the map tab up here, and it's gonna show you where your images were shot. And then you can actually point at them and see the images associated with those particular locations that you're shooting from. So this is a lot of additional information that you can pass on to your clients, which is awesome. All right, so I jumped out a little bit ahead of myself because I did wanna show you that map feature and just one of the many features that I actually like when it comes to Lightroom. So let's take a look on the left-hand side, the toolbar on the left-hand side. We have our catalog. So this is where all of our images end up in the catalog. So over time, the catalog does grow to be uh, numbering in the thousands and thousands of images each year, at least in my case. Um, this is where I work from when I'm dealing with images. So my starting point is always the catalog. I don't mess with the folders. You can make collections, and then they also have published services. So each time that you import new images, they will show up under previous imports. So when we get some new images loaded here, um, they're going to show up under the previous import, just the new collection of images. That's nice and convenient because that means when you offload from a job site, uh, you can go right down to the previous import and start working with your newest 
uh, images. Now there are other ways to find things in here and we will talk about that in depth in the full length course when it's released. Uh, also on the left hand toolbar we have an import and an export button so if we wanted to import additional images maybe we just plugged in a, um, a micro SD card or an SD card uh, we can get those images off and get them into that previous import. Now we're not doing a deep dive on all the buttons here today. This is an overview of the overall interface. We also have an export feature in here as well. All right, below that you might notice we've got some more toolbar information. We're currently looking at a grid view. You can also look at a single image view. You can just double click right into that single image view. The next button down here is the X and Y if we wanted to compare two images. By the way, I'm hitting the G key to go back to the grid. And so we could compare two images like this one, for instance, is a DNG. And at the same time, I also had my drone shoot a JPEG. So I was doing raw files and JPEGs so that I could quickly work with the JPEGs or spend a little more time on the raw files. But when we highlight these, I'm just doing a shift click here really quick, down at the bottom of the screen again, where that X and Y are, if we click that, we can take a look very, uh, very fast at the differences between these two images. And then we could select the one that we like better if that's, uh, if that's what we're looking to do. So once again, down on that toolbar, we can also compare multiple images. So I'm gonna take a third image down here and we're gonna pull this up so now we can see three different images. Maybe we're comparing the last three to figure out which one we want to publish on our website or something. So I'm gonna hit that G key again, just to get back to the grid view. So you could do that with multiple images. So we could pull up four images to do some comparisons with. When we're done, hit that G key to get back to the grid. All right, now also down at the bottom, you can tell it if it's a portrait shot uh, we have different sorting options, and usually I sort on capture time right here. So there's the capture time button. And that's my preference because I like to do things in order. Okay, so looking at that little small bar down at the bottom over to the right hand side, I do want to point out to you thumbnail sizes. So we can increase the size of the thumbnails or we can decrease them. So usually I like to have five across and that's just on the screen that I'm working with at the moment. All right, I'm just gonna hit that G key again for the grid view and let's take a look. We're making our way across uh, over to the right hand side as well, but let's look at the top bar really quick and we have some filters. We can sort on text, we can sort based on whether or not things are flagged or starred. We can also find images very quickly searching on our metadata, or we can go to no search filters at all. These search filters are gonna become very important to you over time as you start doing more and more images for different client locations and keeping track of them. And that's one of the big reasons why I utilize Lightroom is being able to manage large image collections. So, Let's say for instance here, we like this photo and this is the DNG, maybe we like the JPEG more. And we can do a couple of things to uh, help us find it later. I'm gonna hit P for the pick key. And down on the bottom bar, you will see that there's a little flag for a picked image. I could also call this a five star. And down on the bottom bar, you see one, two, three, four, five has been selected. If I go back to my grid view, and let's say I only want to see items that have been picked. There we go, that's the item that we just picked. Or I'm gonna unclick that. I wanna look at all of our five star images and it pulls up only one because we've only flagged one so far. Additionally, we can put information over on that right hand side bar under our keywords, we can add or subtract keywords. Now in the first installment of this video series, I actually added keywords on import. Once again, if you haven't watched the first part, up in the upper right hand corner, there's an info button. You can drop down and you can go back to that first video in our series on a new Lightroom catalog for a new year. So 
very quickly, very easily, we can find images, especially if we tag them with keywords on an, the initial import, and then we start working from there. All right, over on the right-hand side, the right-hand bar that you're looking at here, we've got some more info and some more options and tools. As we were pointing out already here, we can add more keywords to individual images or to multiple images if we want to. We also have our histogram up the top, taking a look at how our image was captured, if we've got hot spots, if we've got dark spots, and the histogram actually tells us a good deal about where our highlights and our shadows are in our image. And in a future video, um, you know, this is a brief overview of the Lightroom interface. In the future video, we're going to talk a lot more about the histograms and our tools for editing. Okay, so moving down the right-hand bar, we also have keyword suggestions. As we do things over time with Lightroom, it will start giving us keyword selections, uh, suggestions based on the recent keywords we used. And right below, you can see our recent keyword set, so you can see what we've been using. We can also have a keyword list in here. So as this library grows and we have more and more keywords, we can look around for specific keywords. Finally, we also have some metadata and there's additional metadata beyond the simple metadata. And right now you will see that I have a simple copy right here as well. And we're gonna talk about that more in depth when we revisit the topic of importing to help you get your workflow going quickly. So when we get to that particular class on Teachable, we'll be going through an offload and a photo selection series very quickly. And one of the things that we wanna do when we get these photos in is make sure that we do have some of our copyright information in the images. Okay, below that, we have a sync and a sync settings, but we're still in the grid view. We've barely scratched the surface here when it comes to all of the different interfaces that we have in Lightroom. We saw the map earlier, but one of the big ones would have to be our develop module. In the develop module, this is where we can actually develop our images, be they raw images or JPEGs or TIFFs or whatever we've imported. We have a lot of room to do editing in Lightroom. You will notice the left-hand bar, now that we've switched over to the develop module, has some different tools. Catalog is gone and all of our other information, previous imports. And now on the left-hand toolbar, we have presets. So we can have some preset settings for specific types of images. We have snapshots of what we've done and right now there's nothing. We have our history of the edits that we've made in this. So I'm gonna go over to the right-hand toolbar, which has most of our editing tools, because I just want you to see what's happening in the left toolbar. So what I'm gonna do here is let's go, I'm gonna arrow over to one of the raw files. And in the raw file, I'm gonna go over on the right-hand side and I'm gonna drop the highlights to deepen up the sky there. And I'm gonna push up the shadows a little bit to get more of the image information that's in the center area that's shaded. And this is just a very, very quick edit. Maybe we'll want to use dehaze, and we will be discussing these develop features in a future uh, video tutorial. So don't be afraid that I'm going a little quickly on this. We just want to give you a feel for the overall interface here and for the develop interface. We could also pump up our vibrance. You know how people go crazy on their vibrance and saturation and make things look unreal. Let's push this a little far. Uh, we don't really need to push the vibrance up that far. And actually, maybe let's push those shadows up just a bit more so that we can see what's going on in here. In addition to the basic tools, let's take a look at the develop bar here. We can go after saturation for our particular colors. Uh, we can sharpen the overall image. We can do noise reduction if we've got some noise in those images. We can also do lens correction for the different types of lenses that we're using. There are automatic lens corrections, and then there are manual ways to correct for your lens. We can also transform the image, rotate it, crop it, make sure that we've got that uh, perfectly even skyline, that we're not tilted one way or another. 
We can also do a couple of simple effects in here, and we can also do some calibration for our colors as well. Along with that, with that big mouthful of a toolbar, up toward the top, you can see that we have a crop symbol. We have a healing brush symbol. We have a red eye remover, and then we have a masking tool. Now we're not gonna spend time today on this one because there's a lot to talk about with the new develop module masking tool. And that tool is incredibly powerful to where you can most likely do most of your edits in Lightroom and not use an external program like Photoshop or Affinity Photo um, or uh, Skylum's Luminar. You can do a lot of the editing right here in Lightroom. Now, when you're doing higher end images, of course, you might wanna throw things out into Photoshop to do some more layering and you can do that. But with the new masking tools that have been added to Lightroom recently, you've got a lot of flexibility for really fine tuning this image. Now, before we move away from looking at this develop bar, I just want to go to the main area and we're gonna follow my mouse down here. I'm just gonna click down here so you can see the little splash because I would like to look at the Y, Y comparison. So this is going to give us a comparison of the original image and the edits that we have made. And it now comes time for me to say something very important to you. The editing that we do in Lightroom is non-destructive editing. And what that means is we can always go back to the original image and we're not gonna destroy the original images with the edits that we do in Lightroom. Over on the left-hand side, while we're looking at these two, on the left-hand side, we have a history dropdown and it shows the changes that we made while we were just doing this simple develop. So at any point in time, if I click back to the import, look over on the right hand side, these two images look exactly the same now. If I bring myself all the way up to where we change the shadows a little more, now we've got those adjustments that we did and check it out, the adjustments are here on the right hand side. We can also zoom in so as you can see, we've got more detail in here because we did push those shadows up. So we could have gone nuts and pushed the shadows up even further, but we can see the differences in the simple edits that we're doing here in Lightroom very quickly and very easily with that little YY down here. So that's our compare the original to the edits that we've done in Lightroom. Now you should also know, and this will also be in another one of our lectures down the road, that we can do editing outside of Lightroom as well. So let's take a look back at this one. That's the JPEG. There's the DNG that we were working on. I'm just gonna hit the grid view. You can see where it's highlighted here as well. And if I right click on one of my images, I have a lot of options once again from the Lightroom interface. So we can open in the loop browser, open in survey, and we can also show in finder, go to the folder, um, for the library, go to a collection if we made a collection. We can also do an edit in, so we can edit in Photoshop. And my second editor that I have in here is the Rico Theta Stitcher right now, and I use that for doing some of my 360 images. I also have an export to Aurora HDR, and we will be talking more in depth in our class series about external edits. That's gonna be a whole, probably two segments because there's a lot to be said about external editing and then getting things back into Lightroom afterward. But for those who are new to Lightroom and new to editing imaging overall and managing imaging overall, we're gonna take it a little slower for you. So don't worry, we're not gonna blast through everything. This is actually gonna be a longer course series here from AZ Drone. Let's take a look back up before we wrap this one up. So we've looked at our library module and the toolbars on the left and right for our library module. We've taken a closer look at the develop module and all of the tools that we have on the right hand side toolbar. We even quickly saw the map feature where we can see our last flight in my case. This could also be a ground based photo tour and if you have a GPS enabled camera or smartphone or 360 camera then you'll be getting this data and when you come back to your office 
you can also take a look at the map of where you shot. Then they have a couple other tools if you want to do print books, slideshows, uh, create prints, or get things onto the web. And we're not going to be taking a look at that one today because I think 20 minutes talking about the overall Lightroom interface has probably been overwhelming enough for folks new to this. And so I don't want to scare you off. I promise in the long term, utilizing Lightroom for your drone imaging business or your standard imaging business or just for fun if you're a hobbyist photographer, I think you'll agree as you start utilizing Lightroom and seeing all of its powerful features, you'll agree that this is a great way to stream streamline your workflow and get your images out faster, get your images selected and edited and exported faster than most other platforms out there. All right, everybody, that's a wrap up for the Lightroom library for a new year, um, part two, where we talk about the overall Lightroom interface. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to be updated when we do new videos, both on Lightroom or on other drone projects or on building your drone business. And you'll be notified when we put up a new video so that you can pop on over and continue following along with our different series. As always, we really do appreciate you spending some time with us, and I hope that these tutorials are useful for you. Once again, if you'd like to see some of our other classes, head over to az-drone.teachable.com or pop on by azdrone.net. And we've got links in both sites to show you the classes that we have available today. And as we add new courses in 2022, we'll add to those links as well.